Hey, what's going on guys? This is Dio from Red Diamond Mobile Auto Detailing. And today behind me, I've got a 2015 GMC Sierra. And this is gonna go from a father to one of his children. And uh, I always love being part of these kind of Passovers between one generation to another. Uh, I most certainly would have loved to have an truck like this when I uh, started to drive. So anyways, I, uh, like I said, I always love being part of that tradition. It's like the American dream, you know, uh, the, the passing of the keys. So we're gonna do an interior and exterior baseline detail on this vehicle. We've got something in the, in the interior uh, that we're gonna focus on and that's gonna be smoke removal. So as far as removing odors, whether it be mildew, mold, uh, animal carcass, something along those lines, there's a lot of similarities between the processes. There's some tweaks and things like that that you wanna do specifically to whatever kind of thing you're encountering. Uh, I know that's vague, but you gotta kinda of just trust me on this. Um, so this is gonna be dialed towards more of the smoke in. If you're looking for like mold or like carcass removal, things like that, I'm gonna post a link uh, in the video description below and that'll kinda of show you specifically for that. Um, so again, with this interior, we've got smoke and we're gonna go ahead and nail that down. I'm gonna show you guys in five steps how to easily remove uh, smoke. I say easy, uh, there's definitely no shortcuts. With this kind of process, you can't just kind of spray a, a, a chemical or throw a, a car bomb, you know, one of those scent removal uh, little canisters in the interior and then go, okay, it's gotta be done with. Uh, that's not really how this works. You need to do um, a full interior detail. So, so again, the five steps that we're gonna get into. Number one is gonna be inspecting the vehicle and removing all the items out of it. That's kind of a normal thing. We really wanna ask questions. So if you're a detailer, ask your clients questions or if you know this is your vehicle, you'll kinda of know. Who smokes, where do they usually sit, uh, how often they smoke, that kind of thing. Most often than not, it's gonna be that pillar uh, right by the driver window that is on the headliner. That's always the big kind of issue. So we want to pay kind of special attention to that. But we're going to do a full interior detail. And that is step number two. Again, there's no kind of shortcuts in this. We need to make sure that everything's vacuumed, that there's no debris in the car, that everything is clean, right? All the surfaces and things like that. So even though we know kind of maybe where the smoke is, that doesn't mean that we should just hit that area and kind of walk away. We want to go ahead and do the whole car to so do a full interior detail, whatever that means to you full interior is kind of uh, subjective uh, to me it's about a two to three hour detail that's what I that's what I do that's what my clients pay for so that's what we're gonna do if it's your personal car just again get it as clean as you can get it um, and, and that'll help the, the process step number three is going to be after you've done the full interior detail hitting those areas that you know that are an issue so again if you're taking care of a spill if you're taking care of mold if you're taking care of mildew if you're taking care of uh, whatever the deal is carcass blah, 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 the list goes on and on. Want to go ahead and then once you've done the full interior detail, focus on those areas and snipe them, right? So again, because of the smoke, because I know the driver smokes, we're going to hit that uh, headliner. And I'm going to show you guys throughout the process about how to delicately clean headliners without doing any kind of damage. Again, headliners are much more delicate and sensitive uh, to products, moisture, and agitation than any of the other materials that are in the interior. So certain things to pay attention to. Step number four is going to be the ozone machine. So I have a machine, uh, most detailers do, I believe, um, that produces O3. It is a radioactive chemical that, um, if used improperly, can be dangerous, just like anything else. Um, but what happens is the O3, when it uh, bonds with the odors, it then neutralizes the odors and then resets to O2, which is perfectly safe to breathe. So with this, I'm gonna kinda of show you the process. I'm gonna show you what ozone machines can do. I'm gonna show you what they can't do and how to safely use them so you can make sure that you don't you know, upset your respiratory system uh, if you just kinda of jump in. So again, super safe to use if just following a certain uh, set of guidelines and unbelievably effective. So get into that more later on. Step number five is gonna be one of the most important ones that a lot of people forget and it's just because of the simplicity of it, changing your cabin air filter. So when you're gonna do a full interior detail and you're focusing on removing odors and you take the time to do all of those odors as soon as you get into a car if you've got that cabin air filter and you blast the ac that old one if you get that old cabin air filter in all of those odors are now back into your interior you got to start all over basically again depending on the odors but uh it's super cheap it's like 11 bucks you can do it yourself and it's just a really good thing to ensure that once you've got the odors out they stay out five steps should be easy enough so let's get a little bit more specific now, get into certain things, kind of help you out with uh, some specific tips and tricks on removing smoke odors on today's episode of Restore, Protect, Preserve.
First step when detailing an interior is you want to inspect everything and remove any kind of items, trash, and also the floor mats. When you're removing the floor mats, it's a good idea to try to keep all the debris on it so that way it doesn't spill inside the vehicle. It makes the vacuuming that much easier. All right, so the full interior is clean. We've done a thorough detail, and so there's nothing that's gonna be in the way when we're trying to snipe in and hone in those uh, specific areas that we know where smoking is. Now, this is a great time for you to use your best judgment. Use the information that you've gathered from your client or if this is your personal vehicle, to kind of know where the smoke's gonna accumulate. Um, as far as the interior on this goes, the ashes were everywhere, but this is a vehicle that's only driven mainly by the driver, and I can kind of smell right here on the pillar, which is where most smoke is going to accumulate with the driver window down, kind of smoking. This is where all of the residue, the smoke residue and the odor is coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white terry towel and my steam cleaner. If you don't have a steamer, you can use product and things like that. Just make sure that you don't oversaturate uh, the headliner. The headliner is a very thin piece of fabric that has a glue, uh, a spray adhesive that's holding up this fabric. And if saturated for too, from too much product or too much moisture, even from steam, that glue can start to melt. Or if it gets too moist, it can start to uh, to droop and sag. And then once you have a sagging interior uh, headliner, you've got a big issue on your hands. So you want to definitely avoid that. So even when you're using the steam, even though this is this is completely safe on the interior, on the headliner, I'm not going to use water. If you guys know your, your settings on your steamer, I'm just going to use the steam. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly agitate this area right up here. So I'm going to go a couple of passes until I see this towel get clean. But I mean, from a currently clean headliner, this is what you're breathing when you're driving. So. So this towel is clean, right? That's all smoke and dirt and everything that's on that pillar. Hands grabbing in to get into the vehicle and stuff like that. But I mean, I can smell it. That is definitely smoke. So I'm gonna keep going at it until this towel's clean and that's gonna definitely help get that smoke smell out. Okay, so we spent about two and a half hours fully detailing the interior and then we sniped those heavy areas where the odor is coming from, especially the uh, where the smoke is coming from, right? Next thing that we're gonna do is now that we've got the majority of it clean, we're still not done yet. This is to kind of ensure that anything that may be lingering in the air, anything you might have missed, or anything you might have agitated, and now, you know, is around the car, this is now going to pull it into the machine. It's called an ozone machine. It comes in many different forms um, and, you know, shapes and sizes. Um, but basically the essential, or the, uh, the, uh, the purpose of this, is you would set this in the interior, the windows all the way rolled up, right? And you would run this, I'm gonna run this for about an hour and then let it rest for about 30 minutes. And here's what I mean by that. So with the windows rolled all the way up, with the interior fully cleaned, plug this in and let this machine run for an hour. Now, when this is running, you cannot get in the interior. So again, this is toxic. It won't kill you, but it definitely agitates your respiratory system, right? Again, this is O3, um, not oxygen. So you definitely wanna make sure that you know nothing alive or nothing that should be in the car is in the car at this time. Let this run for an hour, let it do its job. Then once that hour is done, you're gonna open up all the doors, all the windows, and you're gonna blow the AC um, full blast for 30 minutes and really air out that vehicle. Before you blow the AC, we're gonna go to step five, which is changing out the air filter. Um, so in these orders, we're gonna do the ozone machine. We're gonna open up all the doors, let it breathe for just a little bit. 
enough for us to be able to be safe to put the new air filter in. Once we put the new air filter in, then that is when we turn the car on, roll down all the windows, and we blast that AC for about 30 minutes. You can continually do this as long as necessary, but usually if you do your thorough cleaning, your prep, and you will no longer have odors. All right, so things happened. Obviously, I don't have the truck here anymore. I got a call from a client. He needed to pick up the vehicle a little bit sooner. So again, I was unable to do the video portion of this ozone machine. So I wanna go ahead and do that for you guys right now. So again, I said in the beginning of the video, I wanted to talk about a little bit of the differences between you know, what the machine cannot do and then what it can. So the big important thing to realize is that if you have a, a vehicle that has odors, if you just throw this in the interior and turn it on, it doesn't really matter how long you're going to turn this on for. You could turn this on for six hours. Is it going to get rid of the odors? Probably not. The best way to be able to get rid of odors is to do all of the deep cleaning and the prep work beforehand. And then once everything is sort of agitated and the odor is out in the interior, this is kind of the last step just to make sure that it gets the 20% um, of that odors removed. You, you got to remove about 80%, right? So again, this is not a replacement for you know, good products and good techniques and just being thorough and taking your time with it. That's definitely something that this cannot do. Um, what this can do, what this, what this does do, is it produces again O3 that we've talked about a little bit briefly here. Um, if you've ever walked outside, like either right before a thunderstorm or, or like right after, and you get that real crisp kind of, um, that, that fresh scent, right? That's O3. Right, that's, that's in our ozone layer uh, and it neutralizes the odors because it reacts with it because it's radio, it basically oxidizes um, and neutralizes odors. So again, wanna you know, preface that this can be harmful, um, but the only way that it is is that if you're in the vehicle, so just make sure that when you put this in the vehicle for how much over time, you're obviously not in the vehicle and then once you take this out of the vehicle you give it about 30 minutes to air out before you give it to your client before you start driving around whatever the deal is just make sure it gets plenty enough time to air through and we'll talk about that now okay so most ozone sh machines are pretty similar in their function um, and it's it's very simple literally there's only one knob on here for your settings turn it on to the time that you deem appropriate for this vehicle you know whatever vehicle you're dealing with again 30 minutes, you know, an hour. I wouldn't go much more than that. Um, you can set it to two hours on this, or you could set it on hold and it'll run continuously. Again, better thing to do, do it in 30 minute, or if it's really, really bad, do it in an hour increment. This is my personal vehicle, so I don't have any kind of odors and I'm not obviously working on this vehicle. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but what you wanna do is this is the fan, so this is the back where the outlet plugs into, and then this is the face of the machine. If you stick it right there on the center console, right, run an extension cord if you need to, and the uh, back, and you can kinda just shut the back door on the extension cord. All the windows are rolled up. Plug it in. You've got about, again, 30 minutes to an hour, whatever your settings are set at, and let that machine do its job. Once it's done, you set a timer on your phone. Once it's done, come and open up all the doors, right? And make your way over to the driver door. When you open that up, stick the key in, roll all the windows down, and it will help if you have any kind of exterior fans that you can blow. If you don't, you can definitely turn on the AC full blast, put it on recirculation, and, uh, and then you can remove the ozone machine. Again, try not to breathe in the O3 uh, too much, the, the ozone machine. You'll definitely smell it. Um, and try to air out the vehicle as much as possible. And then the next step, of course, would be after the vehicle is fully aired out, talk about cabin air filters. Okay, so the final step is to change that old cabin air filter in with a new one. So the old one definitely is gonna be holding those odors. It's gonna be dirty. And if it hasn't been changed in quite a while, uh, could be the original like in this truck. Um, so, I mean, this is a four year old cabin air filter and these need to be changed out about every 16,000 miles or about, you know, once, twice a year. So take that new one and put it in and that'll definitely help eliminate those odors that you've been dealing with. If you're not sure how to install your cabin air filter, look in your owner's manual and it should tell you exactly where to access it. For any other questions, you can email me at dogreen at wildmail.com. And as always guys, thank you so much. I'll see you out in the field.